Good evening, fourth grade. Today we're going to talk about the partial quotients division strategy with three digit dividends. So please go ahead and pause here. Uh, write this title on the next page of your math notebook. When you are done with that, please unpause. Uh, close the math notebook so you um, just think and concentrate and unpause when you're ready. All right, so last time we worked on the partial quotients division strategy with two-digit dividends. Let me, today we're going to do three, so let me re remind you just how the two-digit dividend strategy even works first. So we worked on problems yesterday like 86 divided by 4. And so I set it up like this. I would say 86. And I set up kind of this figure here. I'm going to divide it by 4. And what I did is I did repeated subtraction in big chunks until I got down to zero. So here I might have done, say, four. I'm doing groups of four, right? I might do 10 groups of four first. 10 groups of four is 40. So I'm going to take those 10 repeated four subtractions away. Down to 46. Could do that again. Maybe do four times four more, or 10 more sets of four, rather. Take away another 40. And now all I can do without going over this is do one more four. And I can take away one more four and get two at the end. So all in all, I'm making groups of four. Since I'm dividing by four, I made ten groups of four, another ten groups of four, and then one group of four. So all in all, I made 21 groups of four, and I have a remainder left over of two. So that's to a two-digit dividend that we divided. So today I want to talk about dividing a three-digit dividend. What if I tried to do this problem here? What about 586 divided by 4? That's a three-digit dividend. So let's dig into that right now. So I'm going to set it up the same way, 586 divided by 4. And I'm really going to do the same thing. I just have to do it a lot more times. I've got just a lot bigger dividend. And so I'm, the first thing I'm going to kind of notice is since I'm going out to the hundreds place in the in the dividend, the, it, it opens up the opportunity to possibly make a hundred groups. So to, to speed what looks like a really long problem up, I might start with a hundred groups of four right away because that's an easy multiplication right there. And it's going to let me take away a lot of my 586, boom, in one big chunk. So I'm going to start right away with 100 groups of 4 since I can do it. And then I get to take away 400 right away. And I've already done a good bit of damage to my, to my dividend there. So I've already taken 400 off my dividend. And I've just got to keep going here. So I can't do another 100. But I like to think in 10, so I'm going to think, like, what are some easy numbers I could do? 10 groups of 4, but that, I have to do that a lot of times. I might do 20 groups of 4 to get 80. That's pretty good. Um, I may be able even to do 30 or even 40 groups of 4, because I can do those so easy. If I pick multiples of 10, it's just so easy to say to figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to take 4. 40 more groups of 4. So I made 100 groups of 4, now I'm going to make 40 groups of 4. That's 160 down to 26. And now you can probably figure out how many groups of 4 are left. Um, I think I would have 6 times 4 makes 24. And now I am done. I'm all the way down to None left, or no more groups of four, just have two. So all in all, here's how many groups of four I made. I made 146 groups of four, and I had two left over. So not so bad. It really didn't take me that much longer even going out to the hundreds. So that one, in that case, I was able to start the problem off with 100 groups, and that made me do it pretty fast. That's not always going to be the case when you have a three-digit dividend. Look at this. What if instead of dividing that by four, I divided it by six? So let me do one more I do. Sorry if I repeat myself here. I just had a pause and I'm coming back. So in this situation, when I'm dividing 
586 by 4. No, that's what I did last time. I'm sorry, by 6 this time. So I'm a little confused here. So when I divide 580 by 6 by 6, I cannot start out by making a group of 100. Because if I do, I'm going to be... I'm going to be too far past. So unfortunately for me, um, I can't do 100 all the time with a three-digit dividend. Here I could. Here I can't. So it just doesn't work this time. So I'm going to have to go smaller. So I can go, I can almost do a group of 100. So maybe I'll do, how about a, how about 50? That's kind of an easy benchmark number. Um, I can make 50 groups of 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Add my 0. And so now I'm at 286. Can't quite do another 50, but I bet since I'm so close to 300, I bet I could do another 40, even though 50 is too much. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus my 0, yep, I can. And now I've got 46. And let's see, I can find my 6s. I know my 6s well enough to get the 46. So 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 8 is 48. So 6 times 7, I think, is my best chance. So 6 times 7 is 42. And I have 4 left over. So I couldn't make a group of 100 this time. But it still, it only took me still 3 steps if I use good, you know, if I choose good numbers here. It still works pretty well. So... I made 50 plus 40 is 90. I made 97 groups of 6, and I had a remainder of 4. I had 4 more toward my 98th group of 6 that did not fit. So that's the, the partial quotients method with 3-digit dividends. Let's do 2 together. All right. Let's start with 752 divided by 4. So if you feel like you can do this, you can work it out. Um, and then unpause and watch me do it and see if it matches. Or you can do it along with me. Or you can wait till I do it and then write it down. Just make sure you're concentrating, thinking, and engaging with it here. So let's do 752 divided by 4. So in this case, I can make 100, 100 groups. So I'm going to go ahead and start that way. That's a good way to not make it take a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of steps. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start with 100 fours and take away 400. I can almost do it again, but not quite. So since I can almost do it again, a lot of times if I can't do 100, I do 50. Um, if you're good with 60, 70, 80, or 90, if you know your 6s, 7s, 8s, and 9s, that's probably going to be faster. But a lot of times I just, if I can't do 100, a lot of times my next thought is to do 50. It's just me. So 4 times 50 is 200. You'll notice I, I'm leaving a lot left. I still have 152, right? If you had done 4 times 60 or 4 times 70 or 4 times 80, you probably would be even closer to done already. But I kind of, a lot of times, you know, 10, 20, 50, and 100 are my first thoughts. And then sometimes I work with what's in between there, and sometimes I don't. So, 4 times 50, so again, I can do, I can certainly do 20 more. Now, that's 80. Let's see, 2, 15 minus 8 is 72. Um, and then I can certainly do 10 more. Oh, and then 4 times something is 32, right? Four, is that 4 times 8 is 32? And I got all the way to 0 this time. All right. So let's see how many groups of 4 did I make. I made 100, 150, 170, 180, 188 groups of 4. If you did more than 4 times 50, if you'd done 4 times 60 or 4 times 70, you would still get the same answer. So your answer needs to be the same either way. You just may have been able to do it in less steps. Okay? Let's switch over here and do one more. 235 divided by 7. I picked this one because you'll notice I cannot make 
I can't do 100. Not even close, actually. So I kind of picked one where we could do a group of 100 at the beginning and one where we couldn't. So no 100 here. Uh, so again, I told you I kind of usually think 10, 20, 50, 100. You're welcome to use the ones in between 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90. I just don't a lot of time. 7 times 50 is going to be too high. So 7 times 20 is my next most comfortable benchmark number for me personally. It's 140. 5, uh, 13, 95. That 7 times 10 will be pretty close. 7 times 10 gives me 70. And that's going to leave me with 25 more. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 3 is 21. And so let's see, I made in groups of 7, and I made 20, 33 of them. So my answer is 33, remainder 4 toward my next group of 7. That is the partial quotients method with three digit divisors. If you are confused, I would encourage you to definitely go see the I do and the we do again. Take your, you know, do your the best you can to be as prepared for tomorrow's class as possible. Make sure your goal is to learn this, not just to watch it. Um, but when you are done and you've written your examples down and you're comfortable, then I will see you tomorrow for the use. Good night.